check, check, one, two. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Love Jones. I'm your host, DJ OG1. He goes by the name of Kane Wayne. Let's take a second. Let's take a second to admire one another and to realize we come from nothing. And although I cannot find myself within you and you cannot find yourself within me, that does not mean that we cannot inspire one another. But you see, we're human beings, so of course we desire one another. Just don't get it twisted and start believing that we require one another because being a human being just means that we're social creatures, which makes us attention seekers, which breaks us. See, this is needed for side of gazing, but it's the truth when I say that self-appreciation has been a problem of lately, or lack thereof. Let's open up so that we can have some freedom of the mind and clearly see the other side. And now that we're so open with the minds in slow motion, let's pretend that we know ocean with no ocean and move with the freedom of the tide. <laughs> and since you're so patient, let your legs disperse location and let's reverse the earth's rotation so that we can have some freedom from the time. In still air, I'm still here. Been a while since I've been scared, but my real fear ironically is fear since that's the only substance in the heart that can put love in a wheelchair. The power of love can be a curse since love can never be perfect. There's bound to be ups and downs, but without them, we can't be certain. I see the four letters like wings of a dragonfly, so beautifully perfect in distant eyes, but separated and segmented with magnified, so imperfect. But you know it's worth it. And although it hurts, it's better to know it, so don't hold it down. It's better to show it. It's better to grow it, because it proves that we are still alive while letting these perfect imperfections lead us to the freedoms of the skies, and we show it off for what it is. We never needed a disguise. Our, heart, our hearts soar in the clouds, the wind blows in the clouds, our lungs blow them back out while we slowly black out. Let's take a second. King Tay. Look out for the innocent. Let's still protect our innocence. Because in a sense, our lives are just like incense. The way we spark our flames burn out and then just fade away. But I ain't going nowhere, I'm everlasting. Why, if these people are faking, I see straight through them just like some plastic. So automatically I gotta separate. Because to execute my dreams, there's a way I gotta operate. Can't hesitate when it's time to get my big break. But until then, I'ma keep growing and patiently wait. Because I know that my time is due. I've had this passion for a long time, so who would ever knew that I have a couple EPs and album out too. No, not that same little kid from back in middle school, just barely spit. I didn't know it back then, but the storyline was already written. Just had to step into it and be about my business. I can't be driven by fear, gotta leave the past in the rear. I just keep counting my blessings. I thank God that I'm here. <coughs> That's the end of it. <laughs> Give it up. Give it up for King Tay. Yo, give a hand for my man, Jim. Before I perform each piece, I just want to give a brief insight of uh, what may have inspired me or uh, what may have transpired for me to write what I write. You know, so um, this first piece is called uh, Pits of the Abyss. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't really have a title for this until about three hours ago, so. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was one of those uh, pieces that you just write, you know, it's just whatever flows to your mind, uh, whatever was on your mind at the time, the pen just goes, whatever your, your brain's on, so. Um, but basically it's about um, what was on my mind at the time was uh, mental health, um, more so mental illnesses and depression. Um, I feel like that's something that don't, doesn't get uh, talked about among your peers enough. So, um, you know, just being uh, scared of being uh, judged or uh, looked upon as weak or something. And I think we need to change that conversation. Um, you know, uh, we got to do better at listening to one another. And uh, just being able to understand each other more because you never know what the next person's going through. Um, and yeah, uh, so enough talking, let's get to it. Um, I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling blessed. Never caught up on the stress, I don't hold my breath. I know people that have less, so I'm never pressed. I know people trying to survive and make a dollar stretch. I know single mothers working doubles. 
just to feed their kids. I know plenty of brothers who's really struggling from within. I see the world for what it is. When that depression hits, you get lost in its abyss. The harder that you swim, the deeper you fall in pits, or so it seems like. Could you ever imagine what that would be like? To have that sort of mental clinging on to your spirit for dear life, and some days you want to let go. Cries for help returns as echoes. I really hope one day you find someone who truly loves you, gentle. You're always on my mental, right where you reside, on my mind, but never thought I'd see the time and end, though. So, yeah, that's that right there. Um, basically, you know, you know, just, just check on your people, you know, check on your people before it's too late, before they're gone and whatnot, you know, so. Um, but enough of, you know, we'll move forward from the gloomy stuff, you know, let's, you know, so this next piece is called, uh, the next piece I'm about to perform is called She. Um, it was inspired by uh, the many beautiful and courageous and brave, you know, intelligent and powerful women that's ever, you know, touched my heart or impacted me for the better, you know, throughout my life. So this is really just an old days and that. Um, I grew up in a household of women, you know, single mother, beautiful, two younger sisters, beautiful. So I've always had the utmost respect for women. I think that we need to do better as men and just a society in general to, you know, treat our women better. Um, but anyway, so here goes she. She reads books and watches sci-fi. She works out, she does yoga, and she meditates. She goes to school and studies hard, she wants to graduate. She works on health, she knows herself, she knows her values. She stands the ground like a statue. She knows about the hustle, she don't care about the clout. She grew up through the struggle. She's grateful she made it out. She's not into shiny things, cars, clothes, and muscle. She's more into energy, art, soul, and bundles of flower seeds. She can grow a flower seed. She enjoys nourishing. She shares her heart just to see it flourishing. She says she loves it here, but she's not from Oregon. I asked her why here. She says she loves how the air is crisp and the rivers are so clear. She loves to go on hikes and she loves the local beer. She climbs mountains and she skydives. She has no fear. So yeah, this, that's 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 you carry yourself highly, it's so hard not to respect you. I wanted you as mine, cuff you down, you know, arrest you. But I didn't want to go too hard, I wasn't trying to sweat you. I write poems hoping to impress you. Gaze into your eyes, so polite and not address you. And when that light shines in your eyes, it's beautifully fluorescent. Heels got you on your toes, because nothing ever comes as expected. Not to mention, we grew up two different lives, but we're so separate. Modern day Romeo and Juliet is fought on like a leopard. And it'd be absurd not to act on the ceiling or put forth any effort, but she's not easily seduced, so I'm under some pressure. But you can't make diamonds without some time and impression. Time is money, and to spend it all on you would be a pleasure. So your presence is pleasant, vibrant soul, and mine's so clever. When it all falls down, you still manage to keep it together. And together we can be hotter than Satan in the sweater as he's eating hot chili peppers while sitting on summer leather on a mountain of burning embers. Just still you're colder than December. You're my only contender. All these other girls I won't remember because of you. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. This next piece is uh, it was uh, really inspired by the many conversations that I've had with you know, you know my close friends and peers about what the future might hold for them and where they want to be at five to 10 years from now. Um, and one thing that was always common within these conversations was that they just can't wait to be at this destination. You know what I mean? And I always try to tell them, you know, that life really is a distance race. You know, it's not a, it's not a sprint, you know? So um, I try to keep them grounded and let them know that it's really, the journey of getting from point A to point B is the most important part. That's where the magic happens, you know? Um, you know, you, 
throughout this journey of where you want to get to where you want to be. You might fail sometimes. You might feel lost. You might feel confused. You might want to give up. You might want to quit, you know? And that's where the magic happens is when you overcome these things, you know? That's what it builds growth. That's what builds strength. That's what builds character. Um, that's where you gain knowledge and wisdom, you know, from all of these trials and tribulations that you go through. You know, these moments of these face these obstacles and whatnot is what defines you, you know? How do you react towards these negative things that happen to you? You know, do you lay down and let it happen? Do you blame something or do you go get up and go get it, you know? So I call this piece the journey. In this life, you go through ups and downs, highs and lows. So do you fold when life knocks you on the ground? Or do you get up, stand tall and fight another round? The more you move in quicksand, the faster that you drown. Most of life is based on how you react. Do you bounce back and move forward, or do you backtrack? They say the energy you put out is the same you attract. You gotta change that mindset of thinking life is a trap. Have you ever felt like it was worth it? Have you ever felt that you deserved it? Have you ever felt that all the pain you have endured with had a bigger purpose to grow you into a better person? I know you try your best, but we're not perfect. But on yourself, I see you working. For yourself, I see you searching. I know you're trying to be the best version of yourself that you could ever be. But I know you hide scars that we can never see. Sometimes you gotta take a risk. You can never get too comfortable here in this life and live. That's how you become complacent. Life's a marathon, you can't focus on this racing. Learn how to pace it. Because this life is what you make it. But don't forget the journey is what makes you. So don't let it break you. I said life is what you make it. So don't forget this journey is what makes you. Because in this life you go through ups and downs, highs and lows. So do you fold when life knocks you on the ground? Or do you get up, stand tall and fight another round? The more you move in quicksand, the faster that you drown. Most of life is based on how you react. Do you bounce back and move forward, or do you backtrack? They say the energy you put out is the same you attract. You gotta change that mindset of thinking life is a trap. The journey. Thank you. This next piece is called growth. You know, um, pretty pretty simple. Uh, you gotta take risks. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. You gotta try new things. You gotta go get it, jump. Learn to fly, you know. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fall. Don't be afraid of no scars, you know. You know, because, you know, I always say, you know, you can you can leap and fly, and if you fall, you know, you, your wounds are going to heal from those scars. So, um, bro, I had to make a minor change in order to see the finer things. I had to take a risk and start trying things. Success is a result of what hard work and timing brings. So keep working, because your life can change in one year. And even when it's dark out, the sun is shining somewhere. You can't play by these rules, this life is unfair. You gotta trust in yourself, you can't afford to be unclear. But I'm not gonna front like I always had it. I had to grow and let go of some bad habits. Reflecting on my past, but it doesn't define me. So I leave it all behind me. I'm too busy climbing. It feels like I have a greater purpose. That's why I write my verses and make them picture perfect. Let my words be the colors I'm trying to paint my heart. I wear the scars from my falls, reaching for the stars. How are you ever going to fly if you're afraid of heights? How are you ever going to live if you're afraid to die? You got to learn to embrace every single moment. I'm talking about all your highs and when you're at your lowest. Because this life is truly all about how you balance. And when your patience is tested, think before you give reaction. And when you choose to stay stagnant or do you take the challenge? Because the only thing that's worse than death is a regret filled casket. It's not enough to just have a dream. You need to have a plan before you can achieve. Ambition is something that you just can't teach. You gotta want it just as bad as you want to breathe. Because this life will have you suffocated. 
Don't mistake being patient as time wasted. But it's a thin line depending on how you trace it. Because a chance is like a picture. Sometimes you just gotta take it. Bro. Hands together for Lady Low. Uh, my name is Lauren. Again, I go by the name of Lady Low. This is actually my second time at the Love Jones. Thank you, DJ OG1, for having me back. I am super excited to be here, as usual. Even though it's under, you know, different circumstances, it's always a blessing to be able to share my art, my heart, and for those of you watching. Hopefully it's a good escape for you as well. This first piece I wrote um, to touch on believing in yourself through anxiety and adversity. I think that when we're vulnerable, it's easy to forget who we are or forget at least how strong we are. Um, so being able to tap into that self-worth is extremely important. Um, being resilient when we're tested. We're often tested before we're blessed, and that's important to remember. <clears throat> this piece is called Panic. <clears throat> panic. No one needs to panic. I hate the word manic, packed in the static attic of my mind. My ears are ringing. Ring the alarm, I am an escape artist, hurtling through obstacle courses that lay in my way. Honestly, seasoned and seizing the day, I have never taken the reason away. I have only ever asked it to stay and dance with me. I have only ever asked them to not treat me as a casualty. Casually, I know my worth. Get the shirt off my back and hand you my world. My whole world twirls in and out of whirlwinds that slur my words when I am uncertain. My vision blurs and I hurry up to come up with the words that lay in the back of my throat. <gasps> Panic. No one needs to choke. I used to hope that they would see me for who I am, constantly <gasps> choking on their opinion of me. Now I understand that they can only see me as far as they have seen themselves. They would need a telescope to magnify the scope of my mind. Even time could rewind back to simplicity and never know my side. I bend over backwards to move forwards. I lean, I lean over cowards to move towards her. Ring the alarm. <gasps> Panic. No one needs to panic. I am elastic. I am magic. I repeat, I am elastic. I am magic. <gasps> panic. No one needs to panic when I am gone. on the fact that healing is done on our own time. It is not up to anyone else how long our healing takes. And also making room for our blessings. We often block our blessings because we are not facing what we need to face when we need to face them. Speak it. <laughs> and also not being afraid to walk alone. I think sometimes when we have strength and numbers, we forget how strong we need to be as individuals. My healing has not always been timely. Rewinding, climbing up hills that I so finely used to trickle down like sand. My hands have not always been this soft or so open. Feel them now, like felt fabric Velvet static, quietly dissipating. I am magic. To you, I am drawn. How creative you are. Until we are ready 
to close in on the spaces that are taking up too much room. We are doomed to only believe in the sun and never the moon. May many wombs be illuminated by the escapism of gloom, the way we move through the scrutiny of ones and twos, threes and fours. I am not this change. No matter how you rearrange me, quantity never offered me quality, like quality led me to abundance. I count my blessings when I can't sleep. They count sheep and move in numbers come daylight, but it's safe, right? I am outnumbered, but I am whole. I am a force that you are too afraid to know. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Surrender to the control that forbids you to grow. It's all about embracing our differences. We oftentimes aren't willing to listen to people that are different than us because we are afraid that we might not relate. Um, I would like to inspire change in that. And also understanding that there is power in the unspoken. And empowering ourselves to empower others when others are too afraid to do so. Maybe I should speak more. Maybe you would listen less. Maybe I would move forward just to see you regress. We don't have to be the rejects forever. We could be the introverted intellects that only eject for the better. We could be like the weather, ever-changing, rearranging, only engaging in everything far from enslaving. We could be what the world is craving. Maybe I should speak less. Maybe you would listen more. Maybe our silence would become bored of all of our words that are falling short. Maybe I should reach higher. Maybe you would let go of the lows. Maybe I should release this fire. Maybe you would burn from what nobody knows. We could be like the place within me where nobody goes. We could be a yes to a no, a friend to a foe, the water to a flower that insists that as we sit on its growth. Put a little bit of hope inside the eyes of the hopeless. Put a little bit of soul in the soul of the soulless. Hold this. Quote this. Maybe we could be simplicity, simply getting lost in the moment. So this is my last piece of the night. Um, this is a recent piece that I just wrote that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, kind of tapped into my inner child with this one. Um, we have needs that change over time, but we also have needs that stay the same for as long as we live. We're human, and there are certain things that um, our vulnerability can also feel very overwhelmed by. And um, I just wanted to touch on kind of my anxiety and working through that, but also willing to know that it's okay to ask for help, and it's okay to have needs, always. And my body begins to curl into its next question mark, its next fetal position. I crawl towards the love of my mother like I am an infant again, unencumbered 
by the position or the distance it would take to ascend. I am as soft as water, yet I am as strong as the rapids. I ripple viciously through inhibiting habits and dangerous addicts that love to make a woman out of me that would love if I stripped myself of my dignity. And my body begins to curl into its next question mark, its next teeth grinding, jaw clench, its next shoulders up to my ears, mouth is getting dry, thirst quench. I am more hungry than anything. Starving for anything that will give me relief from the wilting words in their speech, pieces of them on the ground that they refuse to give up, and while I refuse to give up, starving for enough, enough that will let me rest like a baby again, I am elated again, this time without fear. God, I have drenched myself in relentless years of tears and gut-punching heartache. I know how to smile now. Look at me. My side no longer aches from bending, coiling into the next question mark or the next fetal position seems like a childlike practice to me these days. So thank you for showing me your ways, but I am still never too old to need my mom. Yes. This is the Love Jones first Thursday here at the Whiskey Club PDX. Grace Joy on the microphone. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to OG for the opportunity. Totally grateful. Um, again, my name is Grace Joy. I've been doing poetry for a while, yet these are my first times coming on the stage. Um, my first one is called, I Want to Love You. I want to love you. Past the four letters that forms the word love. When the emotion isn't there, when all we've done is argued and life seems so unfair. I want to love you after you've loved me, but before you tell me. I want to see the shadows of your name swirling like smoke across my brain, evaporating only to be done again. I want you as my friend, turn boyfriend into husband. I want to love you. Past the fields and infatuated trios and bedroom thrills. I want to love you. The type of love captivated in the heavens where only God's been. You know, like Eve created just for Adam, and Adam's rib making her a part of him, connecting mind, body, soul. It never gets old, yet growing old together in life's journey being the good, the bad, the ugly, boldly proclaiming its end destiny, we affirm so closely, I want to love you. Can I love you? I have one called Black Women. And for this one, first of all, let me tell you, I love God leading Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Love it. So every time I write a poem, I always ask, what should I, I always, I always ask God, what should I write about? And in this time, he said, black women. And I'm like, okay. And he said, they need it. 
They need to be uplifted. And so here's the poem. Black women, black women, how dare we hang our heads low? As the world sees us, it's not even so. Lift your eyes and be proud to smile. The way your lips curl shows your pearls. Precious gems we are from royalties afar. Crowns and African queens sit on the throne, your majesty. Tall and high with your backs straight. They can't tell us we're not great. Melon is popping, rich, dark mahogany. We are the epitome of the very word beauty. Being even shades of mocha, caramel complected, honey almonds drips of chocolate covered creams, divine beings, brown sugar, molasses thick, black girl magic, black girl power, black girl courage, unapologetic for being black girl strong. We are the bone to the backs of our kings and we are the mate to his soul and things. Black women, black women, it is time that we are privileged and uplifted for our great heritage. Take a seat, a sit down on the steps of our ancestors. Wisdom and knowledge breathes through her. Their stories and our stories tells different views. Am I my sister's keeper? Yes, she's you. Take a hand, a stand. Together we hold the standard, the key to how they treat us. Ingenious creators, born innovators, magically delicious soul dishes. Oil to the cracks of dry places. Black women, black women, warriors of prayer. Today we arise, arrive, collectively celebrating our crown fitting. Black women, black women, black women. Again, I'm a do father. Um, I just want to put that one out there. This one, like I said before, is how being fatherless affected me growing up. Um, and with that as well, before I even start, I have forgiven my father. I love my father. And may he rest in peace. Go. To know your father but not to know your father. It's the emptiest a girl's heart can feel. Torn because there's memory lane, bitter because of his inflicted pain, stripped from the love, stripped from the hugs, still hands outstretched, but I grabbed regret. Abandoned and frightened, I surrendered to the arms of strange things and listened to the voice of pained schemes still my body wrapped in theirs and their body wasn't fair because all I wanted was daddy and all they wanted was to be called daddy. Tears filled eyes and Silent pillow cries. This fight wasn't mine, but I scrapped for the attention. Scratched and clawed, not dare I mention what was absent from him. I begged for in them. 
God healed me and hold me because each one that's held me killed a bit of me. Revive, resuscitate, bring back life to know your father, but not know your father. It's the emptiest a girl's heart can feel. Rejection sends tremors and reminders and feedback and memories to when he didn't want me. G R A C E. The bad, the abusive, neglected, I felt it, lost who I was, gained who he was, jealousies, insecurities, pure crazies. But don't leave me. My father held the same handle to the door he walked out. And as long as he don't go out, I'll take who he is. As long as he says that I'm his special, picked, chosen to know your father. But not know your father. It's the emptiest a girl's heart can feel. I'm exhausted. I'm tired of being broken hearted. I'm not a girl with daddy issues. I'm a girl whose daddy had issues. And if ever I am clean, this I am free. The next hand to hold me will be the one to marry me. God took the burden and made certain that abandoned grace is now amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Thank you very much. I want you guys to give a warm welcome to my man Zito. What's good? I hope you want to travel with me, dog. Yeah. Hey, yo, shout out to all the poets before me. And Grace, that, that black woman poem was beautiful. This shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do one. Uh, it's called American Justice. It's talking about police brutality. It's talking about um, the militar militarization of police and all that. So it might get a little real, so I need you to stick with me, though. Okay? Let's go. No justice, no peace, no trust, now where's the unity? These revenue collectors are reckless in our community. Callous disrespect us and shoot us up with impunity. Way before the body cams, this shit is nothing new, you see. Cops brutally murder civilians inexcusably. Captain it took a knee while he was placed under scrutiny. Don't try to justify this lunacy. Killers on vacation while another mother's reading off a eulogy. Tamir was a child. Philando had the right to carry. If a piggy violate my rights, that pussy might be buried. All they got to say was they was frightened. No indictment. They murder way more Americans than ISIS with a license to kill. These cops never thinking twice when they pill. Assuming every black man don't deal and spend his life in the field. Now every time I see them lights, it chills. Because I don't know if they're going to protect and take a life with the steel. Now look, I'm going to let it breathe. These good cops defending the crooked, I guess they all rotten. Plotting to lock you in a system wishing you'll be forgotten. The media portrays his victims with a thug persona. Cops hug the call and playing drugs so they can nudge the quota. These elitists gon' feed us to private prisons, take your freedoms, they gon' teach them to see us. It's opposition, they like to load it, but never stop to listen. It's hard to stay optimistic, we got the vision, they'll never stop the mission. These absurd public servants so fucking nervous, they don't serve us. They just murder the public like we insurgents. While Fox got the nerve to urge the world that they deserved it, I guess they want to see us start purging. Off the perception of false aggression, we fall in from misdirection. History repeats, we never learn a lesson. Look, how do I tell my son about the cops who look quite like me? They might think that he a crook because he ain't white like me. Damn. Thank you. And it's one of the originals. No, don't pull. Y'all, welcome to the stage. Black Butterfly.
something that I don't normally do, which is read some pieces off paper. However, you know, it's like my mind continues to expand, so I need to write a new. So I hope y'all can just, you know, bear with me for a little bit. We got it's you. It's been a year. <laughs> I mean it's been a year. And Love Jones for me was always part of therapy, so sit in on the session. Bringing the vision to life. If I could speak to Dr. King today, I would ask if he thought that he died in vain. I would ask him for clarity on the way that he's been portrayed. See, we were taught all the right and correct things that he dreamed, shaped by America's hypocrisy, clouded by a hint of complacency, lots of deceits and untruth shared with our youth. Misrepresented history is a powerful tool. But what we don't hear are the fears and uncertainty. See, he said that he may have led us into a burning house. Conversations about that view of that ambition were covered up and shut out. We are still living the other America. Stopped, tased, gunned down, and frisked in most instances. What year is this? 2021, eyes wide shut, chasing after a dream that seems elusive. But the popular language speaks of inclusion. Realize and remember that we live within a system of white supremacy. Get free. Allow yourself to remember the analogy of the elephant tied to the tree. See, the rope was removed, but the elephant never leaves. Reminiscent of the mindset of our mentality. The reality is we dwell within a system that told us that we were the minority. There are so many mother, other shades of brown throughout our communities. Minor was never part of the dream. Break down the definition of the word and what it means and the major disparities in between. The words that we utter, we can bring into being. The power of life and death is in our tongues. Think about the phrases you say, the words that you are speaking. Do you speak life into a situation or circumstance? It's a good chance that you are speaking the spell on your condition. We are in prison, you see. We are all shared the mountaintop theme, but with higher skies, we have clear vision to see tall trees, churches, and tenement buildings. Speak life to implement change. Challenge yourself to speak effectively. We have been taught to forget that we came from royalty, spiritual generational beings. We need to get back to the basics. Ask what you can share and what you can give. Be of service to others and a system to live. The remnants of the village are still imperative. We gained material wealth over spiritual health. We have brought into instant gratification over saving to acquire dimming information. <coughs> Down into the knowledge to inspire acquired lack of generational wealth and saving our resources, of course. Beware of the pale horse. It's all about design. It's no coincidence. We have lost our focus and it's painfully clear. 50 plus years and the narrative is still here. Our moral fibers kept us free. We are bound to the most high and limitless is our sky. We forgot the vision and were deceived by our own eyes. Remember, don't believe everything you see in half of what you hear. Dr. King's dream has been shaped into a nightmare. Growth involves change and change involves risk. What are you willing to give? Your life or dedicate your life to? We have a responsibility to bring alive the dream, each of us individually. What did you promise the universe that you were going to do? The visions have been skewed and the view narrowed. Focus has been swayed by the eyes of the media. We are within the 60s initiating People are dying over the color of their skin over again. We've chosen to seek out artificial intelligence and forgot the stories of the griots, ancestors, spiritual guardians, and human connection. We are the kings and queens of Zion. What did you come to do? The vision of the dream is waiting on you. Remember who you are and why you came. 2021, clear vision. The dream is waiting on you.
As long as I got my voice, I will sing his praises. As long as I've got my voice, I will speak out on injustices. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Because I know the end of this story. And as long as I got my voice, I will praise the creator of all things. I pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As long as I got my voice. There will be no marching or protesting, burning down cities for me. See, that, like the COVID curve, has gone flat. Falling on deaf ears, mothers, sisters, daughters in tears, brothers in fear of just living by yet another brother slain. So much to say. Another hashtag, say their names. It took way too long for quote-unquote allies to come along and see what's really going on. Four years ago, you had a glimpse of it. Remember, Colin Kaepernick took the beat, but you disagreed. But you're up in arms about Target. What about the target about that's been on the backs of blacks and bullseye every freaking time? This time, you can't turn a blind eye. It's on every screen and timeline. Welcome to our daily reality. It made you uncomfortable. Imagine the discomfort of having the knee on your neck until you can't breathe. How much longer will we hold up white supremacy? The system must change you have pushed folks to the brink. Think about those who have vowed their lives as preservers of life, healers of peace. Once docile, will become beasts. You haven't seen the likes of this battle cry with the loss of hope in their eyes. They are willing to die. They have nothing to lose. You have shown us over and over again that we are of no value to you. Remember, your forefather says the only good Negro is a dead Negro. We still try to hold up our end of the human bargain, only to be spit on again. So if this construct of systematic oppression doesn't concern you, just wait till they start coming for you. We stand on the promise of the Most High, and as wayward as we can be, he promised to deliver thee. I don't want no rocks crying out for me, because I know the end of the story. And you just wait and see. Because as long as I got my voice, I will sing his praises. As long as I got my voice, I will speak on injustices. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. See, I know the end of the story. And as long as I got my voice, I will praise the creator of all things. Yes! Woo! Our world is in a desperate state. See, we can change it. We can elevate. Our energy is designed to channel love, not hate. We can do it. A decision is all that it takes. Can we share more love? Can we share more love? See, you and I get to decide if we survive. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Sorry.